Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart is signing black in again, asking you to hit that share button. Thank you if you've hit like or subscribe, but uh, special thanks to those of you who have hit the share button. Let me give a shout out to uh, those who I know hit the share button and in the order of my certainty of them having hit it, the proof that I've seen. First off, shout out to Don Calypso. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Bejus Ibmore. Asante Sanababa. The Reverend Brother Pastor Deacon Dr. Anderson. Edwin Anderson. Thanks, blood. I mean that. Information Man Classic. Um, Imam Mufti Sheikh Amir Dwight Hayes and Abdullah Bobby Bin Tayyip. I know you all have hit that share button. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate this. Others whose names I don't know have hit the share buttons. I thank you the same. I just can't single you out because I don't know your names. Now, my last recording, um, I blame men for what we are guilty of. And I said that there's certain things we got to do in order to, uh, to fix that. And I told you what we got to tell these young bloods and how we got to tell them. There's an effect of this. We making ourselves too easy. While they made themselves too difficult. And this effect I'm going to point out right now. This effect means that men don't have the same options and choices in the market that women do. That's it. Now, what does this mean? Okay, women have more options than we do. Maybe not as many for commitment, but actually women have plenty of options when it comes to commitment. <laughs> Maybe not from the guys they want to get to commit, but they got options for commitment and they got options for penis. Many men don't have options for the punani or commitment. Average normal men now have no options in many Western countries. Okay, here's the deal. What does this mean? Okay, simply put. What this means is you got to know this in order to function properly. And this is what we got to tell these young bloods. But the real enemy is not going to be that women deny it. If you tell the young bloods what I'm telling you to say, you really ain't got to worry about them falling victim to women saying otherwise because they'll know. Well, of course, the woman's going to say otherwise. Maybe it's true, maybe not, but she's going to prove it over time anyway. <laughs> maybe by me saying it, it no longer is true. <laughs> it's like when you, you walk up to somebody who you know is planning on robbing your house. Hey, man, I know you're planning on robbing my house. Well, newsflash, now that you said it, he's not planning on that anymore. That's the opposite of a self-fulfilling prophecy. That is a self-defeating prophecy. You say it and it can't be true anymore. Well, maybe that's what these guys are going to face. They say it to these women. I know what the game is. The game stop. Great. But there's something else that goes on in this case. The men will come along and say that's not true. Oh, we have as many options in women as they do in us. And if your game is tight play, you're going to be all right. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I saw a nigga in a closed Facebook group that my colleague showed me since he's in it. And he tried to insinuate that men have as many options in women as women have in men. Like we don't have it rougher than women do. Now, granted, maybe this happens when we get to be older, but in the middle age, and in youth and middle age, that's not the way it works. As a matter of fact, there is an option that we do not have at, across all ages. We do not have the option of the young woman that is untarnished. That's not the case. We don't have the option of the young woman coming to us without somebody else's kids to raise and without a bag of a mountain of debt and without all these problems. We don't have that option. Most of us don't. 13 or 14 percent of men have that option. Those are the super selected, pre-selected guys, pre-qualified. The women are chasing after them when they're young, childless, debt free and tight giving these guys their best, later coming to us with their worst. I wish, see, all people need to do is just admit that that's what it is. That's it. Just, just admit that's the case. They can't. Now, that being said, these men are going to sit up here and try to undo what you're doing. And it's going to sound more believable because it's coming from a guy. 
tell your tell these young bloods what I forgot to mention last time. Tell them, look, young blood, you already see that there are some guys that the women chase after. The women are chasing after these guys already. That's who they want. It's a domino effect. Some saw, you know, some women knew that enough other guys liked him. I mean, some guy, some women knew that enough other women liked him. A few pursued him to try to compete out of jealousy. Others came along and pursued out of, to compete out of jealousy, and it snowballed. That's all. They were just lucky. They're only 13%. Most guys ain't like that. They're rare. They're lucky. You know that. Don't let these guys act like they're the rule. They're the exception. Make sure these young bloods know this because these, some of these ignorant niggas are going to sit up here and brag. Like, either they're lying, and it's not the case. They're not the exception. They're the rule, but they're lying, or they're the exception, and they don't understand the rule. But make sure these young bloods understand that. Let them know, look, they're going to be some niggas, some men that are going to come along and tell you what I'm saying ain't true. That's not the case. It's like inmates that escape from prison. Most inmates don't get out of prison until they're released. That's just the case. Most inmates don't escape. They stay there until the government says they can go. Until it's legal for them to walk out, if ever. They can't escape. And so it's like an inmate that got free coming in and, and, and saying, well, you know, or writing letters saying, well, you know, if you just put your mind to it, you can get out of prison too. <laughs> Nigga, I'm on a life sentence in a high security, a maximum security facility. You just happen to be in the uh, minimum security facility. And you just got, you know, and mistakenly shipped to a minimum security facility and you ran off and rabbited. That's all that is. Nigga, stop acting like, like everybody can do it. No, you just got lucky. Your guard fell asleep. One of the lights, one of the perimeter lights went out. You made it all the way to the river and you swam. That's what it's like. Lottery winning niggas telling others, well, you know, you can get rich too if you just put your mind to it. Nigga, you won the lottery. That's it. Or, hell, you open up a business, you did work at it, but you were also lucky enough to have the clientele that came back again and again and told everybody else. So, yeah, you worked, but you also got lucky. That's what this is, that these young bloods are going to have to face from some of these ignorant-ass old niggas and middle-aged niggas and young niggas. I saw this in a Facebook group, dude trying to sit up here and tell other guys. Now, I'm going to go straight to what the meme was about. The Facebook post was a photograph of TLC looking at the camera. The caption on the meme was, you were singing no scrubs way too aggressively to have the baby daddies that you currently have. The court, of course, in this group, the men agree, but my colleague was showing me the screen <laughs> And as we scrolled down, we saw this one dude talking about some that's BS. Y'all was singing no scrubs and look at y'all baby mamas. He trying to even it out, equalize it. And I'm all about being fair myself, but it's not fair to sit up here and lie to us and say that we had the same options that, th that women did. Man, look, the options are so bad for brothers right now that they don't even know what the good options are that they're missing until they get out. <laughs> that's why passport brothers say you don't know what you miss until you leave. I didn't know. I was 39 years old when I found out. Yeah, that's real. It was 39, wait. 39, I think. Well, 38 or 39. When I married a woman from another country. And that's when I found out what I was missing. Then, because of the government and its laws, we had to split. I've recently married another one from another country. And she holds a U.S. passport. But you know what? She saw how life was in the States and said, this is not a good place for a human soul. With a conscience. And she bounced. <laughs> she came here. We met up. And I'm seeing it again. I had to leave to find this. And I wasn't even looking for it. Found it twice and wasn't looking. Just a little over an hour ago, 
I was washing my hands and getting ready to shave my head. And she walked into our unit from a party that the women are having downstairs. It's still going on. She walked back into our unit. She said, hey, hey, I slum licking black heart. I said, hey, what's happening? She said, is your stomach okay? I, I told her, well, it, it doesn't feel bad now. I just feel really tired. I, I think I've just been eating too much. And then she looked guilty. I said, what? Why are you looking like that? And she said, I just came up to bring you some food, actually, from the party. I'm going back down. I, maybe you should wait before you eat it, though. Give your stomach a rest. All right, I'll see you when the party's over, baby. She went out. She was partying, having a grand time, thought about me. In case I was hungry, even though I'd just eaten earlier, she brought some food for me. Thinking about me more than I think about myself. And this is regular. This is normal. This is routine. I didn't think that this was going to happen in the United States. I didn't think this was. I didn't expect this no matter where I went. And I'm not the only one. Brothers, the options are so bad for you in the West that it's unrealistic compared to elsewhere. Now, elsewhere, there are bad options. Don't get me wrong, but there are good options. It's a mix. In the States, it's not a mix. Now, of course, there are going to be sisters that hear this and they're going to say, well, you know, your wife, she's from another country and she wanted maybe maybe it's because you're a Western and she's looking up to you. You got the U.S. passport. Slow your roll. She has a U.S. passport, but she left. She and I work the same job. And I know for a fact she has more money saved up than I do. She treats me like the boss. I pay the cost too, but she treats me like I'm the boss. Here, there's give and there's take. Over there for you brothers in the West, there is giving and no taking. Too much giving and too little taking. And why is that the case? Because somebody else, 13% of the guys are doing the taking and none of the giving. That's why. That's all it is. They're using you to balance out the equation because they're scared to go to these other dudes that they want to give to. It is a slap in the face to you. <laughs> I want you to take a look at one thing and then I'm done. When you look at this meme that I, I just mentioned, in this meme, um, TLC is looking at the camera and there's this caption. Go and look at the lyrics to that song, No Scrubs. How do they define the scrub? You will notice the pattern. Look at, read the lyrics and you'll notice the pattern. Other than having a shorty that you don't show love, everything else in there is something that can happen to a man without him making bad decisions. It's very, actually very likely to happen to a man. What they're pretty much saying is, you ain't balling. Well, most human beings ain't balling. That makes you a scrub to them. That's a broad definition to be a scrub. You see? Now take a look at Sporty Thieves' song, No Pigeons. Watch that. Read their lyrics. Check out the definition of what it takes to be a pigeon. You got to make bad decisions to be a pigeon. Wearing your best friend's clothes to the club. Got ugly corns on your feet and you wearing open toe shoes. You ain't got no car, but you judging men for, for not being in a car. But you still trying to get a ride. And you don't want to say hi. Wearing another woman's hair on your head. You all fake, but you want a man to be all substance and style. Why, whereas you got no substance and your style is borrowed from somebody else. That's what it takes to be a pigeon. You got to be trifling. You got to make bad decisions. So that's a pretty narrow definition. So why do so many women fit it then in the West? Because we let them, because we're too easy, that's why. Now, if you take this, these definitions, a very broad definition, beyond men's control to become a scrub, a very narrow definition, completely in women's control for them to become pigeons. Yet and still, there's so many pigeons out there that a man has to be a non-scrub by women's broad definition just to qualify for a woman that is a pigeon because there's so many pigeons so many pigeons that's because they don't have to compete with real women so the bar is low for them and so high for you that's why so to be honest with you ladies if you really want to know I didn't record this to tell you anything but if you really want to know why it is that brothers are stepping out and going elsewhere it's like this <laughs> you made the bar so high 
but you've set the bar and you've convinced and tricked these men into, into leaving the bar so low for you and then lowering it some more. That you actually have, you have uh, um, mistakenly turned out uh, from a factory a bunch of superb, stellar, extra considerate men. That's what you've done. Now, you have come out a bunch of inconsiderate bees and pigeons offering so little and demanding so much that actually it you made this attraction the way it is. The women abroad, they're looking at these guys like, okay, they're Western men with these Western passports and some higher income and they're considerate. You have made a dream man for other women. You've done that. You've trained these men to be these other women's dreams. You just didn't think they were going to step out and get passports. Now they are. <laughs> Congratulations. Exactly what you refused to do. Train a man to make other women happy is what you have done. Train a bunch of men to make other non-Western women happy. Now, the, the key points to take from this are Men don't have the options women have. That's a lie. That's not just a lie. That's a goddamn lie. Men don't have the options that women have. 13 to 14% of men have the options that women have or more. They're the exception, not the rule. The rule is you ain't going to have the same options women have. Okay? So that means that it's not fair. So don't let these men come along and talk to you like it is. And don't let these men tell these young bloods and convince them that it's fair. It's not. It may balance out in the end, but for most of men's lives, it ain't going to be fair unless we force it to be. How so? You tell these young bloods how to be a wall, like I told you in the last video, and you tell them, get your passports. Get your skills, stack your bread, but get your passports. If they don't shape up, if they can't learn, you bounce. And if the Eastern women are trying to talk that same stuff, you tell the Eastern woman, if you act like that bitch over there that I left across the ocean, I'm going to leave you like I left her. If you don't act like her... And you act like you got some sense, like your grandparents acted. I'm going to reward you for it. Now the choice is yours. We can do this the easy way, or you can do it the hard way by yourself. Because I got this passport. That's how you play it. That's what we got to tell them. Like I said, this game is brutal and vicious. I said this in a recording months ago. It is brutal. It is vicious. Play it to win it. Because they're playing not only to win, but to make sure you lose. To make sure you don't even survive it. All you got to do is play it to not be taken advantage of. All you got to do is play the game to where you're not always given and not taken. To where you got to meet 17 standards, but you're only allowed to have four. Something skewed like what we got right now. Play that game to win it. And you win it by not being taken advantage of. You, whatever you got to do. For everything you have to do and be and possess. You have the right to demand something in exchange that she must do or be or possess. End of story. If you got to be a president. Okay. She has to be uh, some sort of dignitary. If you got to be a king, she has to be a queen. If you got to be a prince, she better be a princess. End of story. That's it. Nothing else. You got to be a CEO. She has to be a CEO or she has to have a way to save your household a ton of money or she has to have a way to save your company a ton of money. Something. But no more giving without taking. End of story. That's why I said that Western women need to start making approaches. Then they'll know what I'm talking about.